Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this video, we're gonna cover something that's not super sexy, but is nonetheless very important, and that is file types. I'm gonna give you a basic 101 understanding and just a general overview of the different type of file formats and extensions for images and graphic files. So we're gonna talk about JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, what a vector file is, how to use them, the difference between web and print files. I think there's gonna be a lot of great information in here for you that's gonna give you a good overview of how to use and then how to understand all these different file types. Now this is gonna be great for you if you are a web or graphic designer and you're wanting to learn more about file types or even if you just wanna level up what you already know. But it's also gonna be great for you if you just use files for sending things over email or uploading images to a website or maybe you need to send in a logo to the printer, but you have no idea what file to send. There's gonna be a lot of great information that's gonna help you no matter where you are in your journey, no matter if you know just a little bit or if you already know a lot. Now, a couple things before we dive in that I wanted to mention. Number one is that I have made this into a free ebook. So if you like this video and you like the post, the ebook is available for free and it's going to contain everything here and it's gonna have all the information it's, there's gonna be a lot of visuals and icons, and this will be the full PDF that you can have on your computer if you would like for your reference. Now, it's really easy to get this. You can just go to my site. If you already have an account on my site, all you need to do is log in, go to the ebook, and you can just click to download it. If you don't have an account on my site yet, just sign up for one for free, and then you can go to the ebook, and you can download. That way you can have for your reference. And the other thing is, if you are a web designer and you have a lot of clients to where you're constantly letting them know what type of files to use. Maybe they they don't understand why you need to optimize images before they put them up to the website. If you find yourself repeating information over and over and over, I have made this entire ebook and this entire post into a white label template for you. So if you have clients that you would like to share this information with as well to help save you time, then check out the white label templates because it contains a Divi layout of the full page with all the information, all the icons, as well as an InDesign file with the PDF ebook if you would like that. All the graphics, all the images and resources are there for you as well. And then you can put your own logo, your own branding, and then you can share this with your clients to help save you some time. So. Let's go ahead and get started here. So first off, there are a lot of file types out there. There's file types that are formatted for documents and spreadsheets and text programs. There's other file types for coding and computer systems. But in this video post in this ebook, we are going to cover graphic and image file types that are things that we all either knowingly or unknowingly use almost daily. So this is the way I wish somebody would have explained it to me when I got started into graphic design. And that is that graphic and image files are going to be either one of two file types. They're either going to be web files and the technical term for web files are bitmap or raster files, or they're gonna be print files. Print files are what's called vector files. So if you've ever had to send a logo into a printer and they ask for the vector file and you're like, what the heck does that mean? That's what they're talking about. So all file types, at least image file types, whether it's a JPEG, a PNG, a PDF, an EPS or whatever, is either is going to fall into one of the two categories. It's either gonna be a web file or a print file and there's a lot of differences between the two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the differences between the two and then we're gonna get into all of the most popular file types within each one of these categories. Now. What you're gonna see here, the main difference between bitmap and vector is shown in this graphic. The biggest difference is that web files are called, again, bitmap files or raster files, and they are built within a certain set of pixels. So this means that they will look great when they're at 100% or they're at a certain size, but they're gonna pixelate and blur if you zoom them or you blow them up. Again, just like the example shows. Print files, on the other hand, which are known as vector files, can be expanded and scaled without losing any, quali any quality at all. These designs are used with basically ma mathematical lines in certain programs. Instead of being pixel-based, that way they can remain sharp even if, even if they're blown up from a business card size to a billboard, per se. So if you've ever had a picture or a design that looked great on the web, but then you went and and you printed it or blew it up on like the size of a big poster and then it got all pixelated and looks terrible. 
that's probably what happened. Now, it's important to know that some programs like Adobe Photoshop and some other photo editing and web editing software are bitmap and raster programs where other programs like Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, and some text editing software are vector-based programs. So that's how you can essentially create the difference between the two. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick story. How I learned this the hard way was back when I was in a band, I, w I started designing our t-shirts and our merchandise, and I went to design a banner. Now, at this point, I was, just I was just used to designing smaller designs, and so I went into Photoshop, I created this beautiful banner design, sent it to the printer, and then when we went to pick it up, we had this design that looked great on my computer, and then when it was blown up to an eight foot banner, it looked terrible. The letters and the words were all blurry and pixelated. It was nearly unreadable because I had created it as a small bitmap web file. They looked great on Photoshop and on my computer, but when they scaled it, it just looked terrible. So I had to kind of learn that the hard way, which is why I'm really passionate about letting you know what the difference is between the two. So let's have some fun and let's talk about the difference between web and print files. So number one, web files. These files are small, they're optimized for web, they're gonna load faster, they're gonna be great when you're doing anything online or sending emails or anything like that, but again, they're set to a certain size and they're gonna pixelate if you blow them up or you scale them. So if you design a business card, it needs to be designed at exactly that size. You can't make that a poster as well, otherwise it's gonna look terrible. Now, with web files and print files, we're gonna cover a few different areas as well that are really important that we'll cover here, but I do get into detail into these more below. So again, the file type of web files are bitmap or raster. Now, web files and print files have different color spaces. So again, we'll talk about this in more detail below, but the color space for web files are RGB, which basically means it's a mix of red, green, and blue. Resolution for web files should be 72 DPI, which stands dot per inch. Don't worry, again, we're gonna cover this below. And then the size of web files can generally be about 1920 or lower, and they should be measured in KB, which means kilobytes. So when I'm doing a slider, for example, on a website, I generally don't make any images bigger than 1920, um, just because even with most high resolution screens, 1920 is gonna be a pretty good size. Now let's cover the most popular web file types. JPEG is by far the most popular. I do have the meanings beside each one of these, but we're not, they're not necessarily, <clears throat> but we're not necessarily going to cover those in detail. But this is the most common type of image file. The cool thing about JPEGs is that they can be optimized and be saved to be very small for web, but they can also be created very high res and they can be scaled to be very big as well, which is really handy. So when you download an image from your camera, more than likely it's a JPEG and more than likely it's huge. It needs to be optimized before you put it on the web. Pings are very similar to JPEGs, except they can have a transparent background. So these are great for web as well, not ideal for print. Pings are also generally bigger file types than JPEGs. So unless it has the need for a clear background or a transparent background where you're moving elements over each other, I generally always use JPEGs, but pings are really handy as well. Next up are GIFs. Now, before we get into a GIF, I do want to mention it is pronounced GIF, not GIF. GIF is a peanut butter. It stands for Graphics Interchange Format, so it is a GIF file. And these are animated web files. You'll often see these on websites if there's movement or little animations. They almost look like quick videos. You'll see these all the times uh, on like social media and other messaging outlets where you want to send a quick GIF. That is a web-based graphic animated file, which is a gift. SVGs, I love SVGs. These are essentially scalable vector graphics for web. So they're not used for print, they're just used for web. But the cool thing about these is that you can scale them on the web without losing quality. So we use these all the time for icons and other pieces to our websites to where maybe we have icons that are kind of small, but then we want to use them on a different page and they need to be bigger. Well, with SVGs, you can scale them up and they don't lose quality, and opposed to having a small JPEG that would look blurry if you had to blow it up. So SVGs are great. They are essentially vector graphics for the web, which is pretty cool. And then finally, PSD, which is a Photoshop file. These are the art Photoshop files that can be exported as JPEGs or pings or GIFs or other file types. A lot of times my clients will have an, a PSD file and they're like, what's this file for? And generally this is just for the designer, uh, but these can be used for printing as well. Now there are some additional web extensions files like TIFF and BP, BMP, 
But the ones I just mentioned are the most common that I recommend that you know and that you're familiar with. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of web files, let's dive into print files. Print files, again, are built to be scaled and expanded without losing quality. So what looks good on a business card could look amazing on a billboard. The letters will look sharp and they're not gonna look bad if you scale in. Now these are great for print, but they're often large files that are gonna load slow on the web and they're too big for emails. And <clears throat> the problem with that is you wanna make sure if you have a print file, you optimize it to a web file before you do anything web related with it, before you attach it to an email, before you put it up to your website. You wanna make sure if you're doing a big design with a vector design, you wanna save that for web first. So the file type is again vector. The color space in this case is actually CMYK, and we'll get into this in a little more detail next uh, because the color space for print files are different than web files. And the resolution on the other hand for print files can be anywhere between 150 and 300 DPI dots per inch. So the files, that's why the files are generally much bigger. And then a lot of times the size, you'll see these often maybe 3,000, 4,000 pixels wide or high or even bigger. A lot of times if you're downloading images from your camera, you'll notice that they're gonna be very, very large images, often several thousand pixels wide. And then these are generally gonna be measured at MBs, which is short for megabytes. Now let's cover some of the most popular print file types. PDF is by far one of the most popular printed file types. A lot of times when I'm designing a design in Illustrator and we go to print it, I will save it out as a high res PDF and that's what will go to the printer. Cool thing about PDFs is that these are kind of like the JPEG of the print world files. These can also be saved down as well to be very small web files. So the ebook that you're gonna download for free is a PDF file that is saved to be smaller. Now it's gonna print okay if you decide to print it, but it will also be fine to be emailed as well. It's a smaller print size file basically. PDFs are very, very versatile and again, can be used for both web and print technically. But most of the times you're gonna send files that are PDFs to the printer. EPS is similar to a PDF, but these are gonna generally be for just printing logos and uh, sometimes branded designs that are one color or two colors or just a handful of colors. A lot of times EPSs are great for things like embroidering or maybe if there's like a cutout of a logo, um, these are the file they're gonna want. So if you've ever worked with a printer, maybe you're getting your logo on a t-shirt and they say, can you send the EPS vector file? And you're like, uh, what the heck does that mean? That's what they're talking about. Now, AI files, which are another really popular file format for print files, is an Adobe Illustrator file. These, very similar to PSDs, can be exported out as PDFs, EPS. Now these can go to printing as well, but generally I like to print with PDFs or EPS, depending on the situation. But Adobe files can also be exported as JPEGs and pings as well. So sometimes I'll do a design in Illustrator because I know I want it to work on a poster and potentially a billboard and maybe on a t-shirt, but it's also gonna be used on a website, so I'll do it in Illustrator. You can save it as all those different file formats, super cool. Another popular one that you're probably not gonna be using unless you're a designer is InDesign, Adobe InDesign file. These are multi-page documents that can be saved in multi-page PDFs or documents, and this is vector-based as well. So anything you do in InDesign will look great no matter how big it is. And then finally, as I mentioned previously, if you're downloading images off a camera, generally it's either gonna be a JPEG or you might see it in this format, which is RAW, which is gonna be a very, very big uh, image. Now this is great, particularly in the case of a billboard or something, you could use a RAW photo in the background because it's gonna be huge, so it's gonna print out really nicely. But you do not wanna use that on the website. You wanna make sure you optimize that. <clears throat> now again, there are different print print file extensions as well, but these are the most common ones that I've worked with and I think you should be familiar with. So at this point, I wanna cover what we talked about briefly there with color space, resolution, and sizing in a little more detail. So let's get into it and have some fun. Color space, most people don't know that there is a different color space between web files and print files. As I mentioned, web files have a color space of RGB, red, green, and blue, and the reason this is is because web files are gonna be online, which means they have a screen that is pushing light behind them. So colors on the web are gonna look a lot more vibrant than they would printed because again, they have that screen light pushing behind them. This is why sometimes if a photo 
looks great online and then you go to Staples or something and get it printed and it looks all dark and different, a lot of times it's because it's either an RGB file or you're looking at it online and it prints out differently. Now, print files, on the other hand, are in a color space of CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And these are the printed colors. So anytime you get something printed, they are using a color palette of CMYK. And again, this is why it's so important to make sure your files are in the right color mode before you send them out. So for example, I'll just show you real quick. If I'm in Photoshop and I do a web file, I could do new. And if I go over here to the details, you can see right here, it gives me an option to set not only the width and the height, but also the resolution and the color mode. So I can choose between RGB or CMYK for print. Now again, most of the time you're using Photoshop, you're doing web work, but you can potentially create some smaller print designs here as well. And then same thing, if I was using Illustrator, I could do a new file and I could set the resolution and the color mode. So if I'm doing say a banner this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and go right into CMYK color, and now I'm ready to create a print design. Now I learned this the hard way. Uh, just another quick aside, when I was doing, again, going back to the band days, I was designing t-shirts and artwork and stuff. Well, I got requested to do a line of t-shirts for somebody, and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I got paid to design all these different t-shirts. I did them in Photoshop, I did them as smaller web files. I didn't know anything about Illustrator or the difference between the different color modes. And then once the designs were approved, we sent them off to print. The guy spent thousands of dollars on t-shirts and when they came back, all the colors were off. Reds were like oranges, blues were like purples, reds were pinks. It was an absolute nightmare. I felt terrible for the client because he didn't know what was wrong. He was blaming it on the printer. I didn't know what was wrong either. I had no idea between the difference. And the problem was is that I created RGB web files and I sent them to get printed instead of creating them in CMYK color mode. So you wanna make sure, particularly if you're a designer, that you have the correct color mode. Next up is resolution. This is really important just to understand no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're a designer or whether you're just the average Joe just using images on, again, websites or sending through email or whatever. And like I mentioned previously is that these are known as and registered in DPI, dots per inch. So that's why a lot of times, as you just saw me kind of mock up setting up files, if you set up a file that's maybe 300 pixels wide and I set it up in 70, 72 DPI, it's gonna be way smaller than if I set it up as 300 DPI because there's more dots per inch in that file. And you'll see this all the time too with older versus newer computers. So for example, my current iMac is in a 2011. So that iMac has a resolution that's much lower than my MacBook Pro, which is a newer computer. So the resolution is so much higher on this computer than that one. So I could look at design that's 500 pixels wide on this computer. And then if I looked at it on my computer back there, because the resolutions are different, it's gonna look huge over there. I would have to zoom out to look at it 100%, whereas this computer, it's gonna look really small because of the resolution difference. So it's just a quick FYI on resolution, and this is why a lot of times when you're downloading pictures from a camera, they're gonna be massive and you need to optimize them to a lower resolution and a smaller size before pushing them through email or putting them online. Now, speaking of size, we're gonna talk about size in pixels and bytes. Size is kind of similar to resolution. Uh, it's not as important for vector, vector files because as you know now, it doesn't matter what size a vector file is, it can be scaled and it's gonna look fine. But this is really, really important with web files because again, anytime you design a web file, if you blow it up bigger than 100%, it's going to start pixelating. Now let me just explain file sizes and what you're most commonly gonna see on your computer. So generally you're gonna see files, images, and folders in one of four sizes. You'll see KB, which stands for kilobytes. You may see MB, which stands for megabytes. And you might see GB, gigabytes, and then TB, terabytes. Now there are smaller and larger types of measurements out there for computers, but generally, again, these are the four you're gonna see. And the difference is that again, with web files, like I mentioned, most of those you're gonna see in KBs because those are a smaller measurement. And then with most vector designs and high res photos, you'll see those in MBs, megabytes. 
well, gigabytes and terabytes, generally you'll see those with like folders of music or videos, and then you get into really big file sizes. But let me show this to you as a practical example. I have downloaded a free stock photo, stock photo of this city here, and you'll see if we look at the details that it tells us right away some good information about this file. Number one, this is a JPEG image. It is 3.4 megabytes, and look at the dimensions. It's 6,000 by 4,000, so that is a big photo. This would look great if we wanna add it on a background on a really big billboard or a file, but do we wanna upload this right to a website? No, we wanna optimize it. There are optimizing tools in the resources below, by the way. So what I did is I optimized it, and now let's look at this photo. This is a photo that is web ready. It's a JPEG still, but look at the size. It's 585 kilobytes, and it's only 1920 wide and 1280 pixels high. So this is ready to go online. It's a much smaller file type. So that's just a practical example of the measurements you might see on your computer with file types, images, or folders. So wrapping up, one question you might have is, why would I ever create a design in Photoshop as a bitmap file if it's just gonna pixelate and distort when I blow it up? It's a great question, and generally what I like to say is that there are a lot of benefits when you're working with Photoshop and bitmap programs. Number one is that the file types are just, again, much smaller, so it takes much less room on your computer when you're working and saving file types. And then, particularly a program like Photoshop, it's a lot more flexible and powerful when it comes to graphics and image editing than something like Illustrator, where it is line-based, it's vector, so the designs are gonna look great when you scale them up, but again, there's a there's very limited compared to what you can do with Photoshop. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take an image and I'll color correct it and optimize it and adjust it and edit it in Photoshop and then I'll bring it over to Illustrator and that's when I'll put uh, type on it and fonts and that way that design can be scaled without the fonts looking all blurry and pixelating. So it's a great question. That's one of the main things I recommend doing because there are pros and cons to using both. I do still use Photoshop all the time but I tend to design right in Illustrator for all my graphics, that way I can, I can reduce or I can expand, particularly the fonts and the typography without it blowing up or pixelating. So, in short guys, I hope this overview of graphic and image file types has helped and hopefully it gives you a good idea of the difference between file types and how to use them moving forward. I just wanna give you some takeaways before we wrap up here. This is going to apply to you whether you're a designer or whether you're just the average Joe or plain Jane using files over email. Number one is to make sure that your logo is designed as a vector file. You do not want to design your file in Photoshop, or excuse me, design your logo in Photoshop. You want to make sure you design it in Illustrator or something that can be expanded and blown up as a vector file. Then you can save the JPEGs and the smaller web files from there. When you take an image from a camera or download it from a stock photo site, like you just saw in the example I showed you, you wanna make sure you optimize those for web before you put them on the website or before you try to attach to an email. Otherwise, you're gonna get an error that it's too big to attach to an email or you're gonna make your website load super, super slow with a huge image. When you're attaching and sending files, make sure to do what I did. Look at the file type, look at the size, look at the resolution, and then decipher whether it needs to be optimized before, again, putting it on a website or sending it over email free optimization tools below. And then do not send a small JPEG logo to a printer if you have something that you wanna get printed. You wanna make sure you send the vector file, ideally an AI or a PDF, or if you're sending like a logo to get embroidered, that should be the EPS file. So there are some resources in the post below. There is a free image optimization tool that I recommend all my clients use. Really, really handy. It's a dime a dozen out there. You can basically just Google free image optimization. You'll find a ton of different options. I found this one right now to be one of the best ones for optimizing and saving designs and, and particularly images out to be smaller and web ready. So that's a good one to have bookmark and to use for your reference. And then I have a couple of posts. I have one for designers on how to optimize images with Adobe Bridge, which is what I use particularly for editing in optimizing photos in bulk. And then I also have a video that I just give my clients that I'm gonna give you access to as well. It's unlisted, but it's on YouTube. You can check that out with the link below. So if you're a non-designer, you wanna know how to use that program I just showed you, check that video out. I'll link to some other sources below as well. But again, I hope this video and post has helped you out. 
Just as a reminder, this is available as a free ebook. So if you already have an account on my site, just log in, go to the ebook. You can download it right away. You'll get the full PDF with graphics and everything built out and, and listed out in more detail. And then if you are a web designer and you would like to have all this information for your clients, be sure to check out my image file types white label templates because again, you can get the full post that's gonna be available as a Divi layout for you that you can just plop into a page and you can send that to your client for reference or you can have the full ebook which is an InDesign file and you can check more information out on the page but you can have that as well. You can put your own logo in there, your colors and you can have a really nice guide for your clients and I think it's gonna save you a lot of time. This has really helped me out and I'm excited for my clients to be more empowered particularly those who are using and running their websites. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and this post. Hopefully you have a really good understanding now, or at least a better understanding of file types, what they are, how to use them, the difference between vector and bitmap and web versus print. And hopefully you're gonna be able to work with files much better moving forward if you're just a plain Jane or average Joe sending file types over, over uh, email, or if you're a web designer and you're actually creating files. Super important to know all this stuff. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys on the next video.